Hello, Simply Birders, and welcome to our first book review. Just before I start, just the usual YouTube admin, if I may ask if you can please subscribe to our channel, hit the notifications bell, the subscriptions, and you subscribers watching when you get the notifications of our new videos really helps keep the channel growing, and it really helps bring new content to the channel. So I mentioned I'm doing a book review and we're reviewing the new complete photographic guide to the birds of Southern Africa. Just a disclaimer up front for some of you that may be aware that Simply Birding Nature Sounds supplied the calls to the companion app that goes with this book. We do not get one ounce of royalties from this book whatsoever. So whether I review this book favorably or not, if it sells one copy or a million copies, I have absolutely no financial vested interest in actually telling you this, nor is this a sponsored video. So really, this is an honest appraisal of a book, just as a bird enthusiast myself. So first off, you'll see a huge stack of books. And the question is, you know, when you've got a huge stack of books like this, do we need another bird book in our library? And honestly, when looking at this book, the answer is yes. You know, I've, I've got all my Southern African bird books here. I've got a lot of other books, specialist books, raptors and waders and you name it. But just my books on Southern Africa, these are them. I've got my Roberts Geographical Variations, various iterations of the latest Roberts Field Guide. I've got their Field Companion. I've got some old Roberts birds of Southern Africa here, even the old family book that we used to use when I was growing up in its cloth field case. Um, I've got various iterations of Sassel birds of Southern Africa. I've got my Newman's birds of Southern Africa. And I've been asked this before, just by the way, I'm not actually related to Ken Newman. And then even this old, the field guide to the birds of Southern Africa by OPM Prozetsky. But those are just my illustrated books. I've got Ian Sinclair and Peter Ryan's Complete Photographic Guide to the Birds of Southern Africa. I've got Berger Celia and Ulrich Oberpreller's book. I've got Ian Sinclair's Field Guide to the Birds of Southern Africa and a larger one he did. And I've even got this amazing coffee table book, The Complete Birds of Southern Africa. So that alone is just my collection of Southern African bird books, but I gleefully added this to my collection. So, photographic guides versus illustrated field guides. It's a debate that has raged on, and honestly, there's a place for both. So, when you're doing a field guide, you want all of the features of the bird to be on your illustration on one bird so that you can make it concise and as easy to use as possible. In order to do that, often you might have the birds in a slightly unnatural pose. So you might lower the wings so the rump can be visible or whatever. So it's not always easy to accurately convey general impression of size and shape or jizz of a bird. And on top of it, the bird isn't always in its natural habitat. Quite often they're not even drawn on anything. They might be drawn on a rock or a branch or whatever, but the birds are not in context. However, you can get all of the ID features easily visible in a single image. With a photographic guide, the birds are often in their habitat and are obviously in a natural pose because it's a photograph, so your general impression of size and shape is far easier to convey accurately with a photographic guide. So both of them has, have their place, and I honestly recommend if you don't have at least one illustrated guide and one photographic guide, you should make sure as a birder that you have at least one of each. But the history of photographic guides has to go back to this book by Ian Sinclair many, many years ago when I was still in school when I was birding. This came out, and it really was the groundbreaking photographic guide to the birds of Southern Africa. Obviously, there weren't as many photographers in those days. So in some cases where photographs weren't available, illustrations were used, but a lot of effort was gone to make sure that it had as many photographs as possible. Later on, uh, you know, the more complete guide came out. 
a lot more photographs, more juveniles, more variations, and obviously a lot of photographs to cover the region. With this latest book, I have to say, with the vast increase of the number of photographers out there with phenomenal cameras and phenomenal lenses, the photographs in this book are absolutely jaw-droppingly beautiful. Right throughout, I mean, this book is, for birders, this book is eye candy. Um, you know, beautifully pin printed on quality glossy paper. It's just about a magazine of a, of a bird book. Um, it, it's so beautiful visually. It doesn't quite have as many photographs and as many variations as, say, the complete photographic guide, because that's got over two and a half thousand photographs. But it has all the main photographs you need. So it certainly covers the topic really, really well. And above all, it covers it beautifully. In addition to that, for, for birders who don't bird by taxonomy, everything's been split into what I would consider more logical groups. So you've got your, your fruit eaters. You've got a, a number of different groups here. You've got, um, let's pick another category here. You've got small birds with long legs. You've got large birds with long legs. So it's really broken up into logical groups visually and not taxonomically. So it really does make it easier, particularly for a novice birder, to open this book and work with it. In addition, with the latest mapping data available from the likes of Bird Lasser, the maps are getting more and more detailed in the books. And you'll see the maps in this book, if you have a look at it closely, are very, very fine grained. So gone are the days of a big green blob or whatever it is, or whatever color you're using for residents and migrants and so on, showing you where birds are. This is much, much more fine and detailed and gives you a more accurate sense of how likely the birds are to occur in your area. So overall, really, really a job well done. And I mentioned there is a call scan app that you can download free of charge and you scan the images and it will play the call for that, that bird. But what I particularly like about this book, and it's my big bugbear with any new book that comes out, uh, unfortunately this book doesn't fall into that trap. The first thing I do is, as the knowledge of bird identification has evolved, there are many features that we used to use as identification which quite frankly don't work. And a good example is, I'm now going to look in this book and I'm going to look for a spotted eagle owl. And you'll see why in a second. Okay, so let's go to page 233, and I will tell you what I love about this book. So many of the field guides over the years have published the orange eyes of Cape Eagle Owl being a diagnostic feature to separate from spotted Eagle Owl. Many, many birders with any decent field experience will know that spotted Eagle Owl can also have orange eyes, not only yellow, and that the orange eyes of Cape Eagle Owl is a misnomer that does not work as a field identification feature. And I notice in this book that they do not use it as a diagnostic feature. I mean, they literally say here um, that the eyes are orange. This is for Cape Eagle Owl. And then it says here under confusion, some spotted eagle owls also have orange eyes. So... I will take my hat off to the courage of, of these authors to publish some of the latest thinking, debunking some of the old RD features that have been rehashed in many, many works over and over again that nowadays we know doesn't work. And, and there's other things that I've checked in here where the latest RD thinking is covered in this book and covered well rather than just simply reprinting what's been printed for the last 50 years. So the book is certainly well researched, it's well laid out, it's beautiful visually to look at, the quality of the book from a printing perspective is awesome, and overall I mean I, I honestly say that visually and from a layout and ID perspective this is a really phenomenal book and it certainly is up there with the best photographic guides in the region and probably 
is edging ahead of setting the bar of what a photographic field guide should be, particularly because of the well-researched ID methodology. And you know, many people have been asking for years, someone with the field experience of the likes of, of Trevor Hardacker, when is he going to get involved in the book? You know, many people have used him on Facebook for his assistance for bird ID. He's helped the birding community vastly and he's very well known for his ID competence and he's been on the BirdLife South Africa Rarities Committee. And finally, we do have a book in which Trevor Hardacker has shared some of his knowledge. So yes, overall, I honestly think a book well worth having in anyone's library. And even if you've got a huge stack of books like I do looking at these books on either side, I honestly think this has a place in every birder's library. And I would recommend you rush out and get a copy. It really is phenomenal. And when you add the call scan app to it to be able to use the app to play a call in the field, really, really an awesome, well-rounded finished product. So yes, I hope you enjoyed the book review. We'll have many book reviews coming on a wide range of books. Books we've been involved in, books we haven't. We're going to review as many bird books as we can on a wide range of topics. And hopefully you'll find what I've shared with you now and what we share in future reviews valuable. Again, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let's keep the channel growing. And thanks for watching.